Sunday the 23rd of July and we are on the Australian dollar, US dollar. So let's have a quick recap of this market from last week in relation to our Sunday analysis and then we'll have a look at the market for the trading week ahead. Okay, so it was all about the ascending triangle last week. We had just broken up above that key level of resistance that we've been going over for the past few weeks. Now, what I said was basically I wanted to see if the market held up above this level or if on the Monday it was a false break and it just crashed back down again. Um, now, on the Monday, the market held up above the key levels and for me, that turned the market bullish. Now, we didn't get the pullback into these levels down here. Um, so what I was looking for the whole week was basically the market to break above any level of resistance, pull back, and then bullish bounces. The market then came all the way up into these levels up here. Um, you know, as after we broke up above here, we went over the potential was for the market to get all the way up into eight thousand. It didn't quite reach those levels. Now, on the Thursday, what I went over with subscribers was that this level up here. In fact, um, I didn't actually go over that with subscribers. Um, sorry, <laughs> that's completely wrong. I didn't go over that with subscribers before I get called a liar. Um, I was recording videos to update the Zone Trader course and I went over it in there. And basically this level up here became a key area of resistance and it was the first level I was watching for potential sales. So subscribers, you'll get to see that when those videos get updated. Um, now, unfortunately, what happened was the market spiked up in overnight trading. So I'm based in the UK. In overnight trading, the, there was an Australian rate decision. The market shot up into that key zone and then we had the very strong rejection coming from that level. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through exactly how I identified that level in this video because moving forward, it will still be key support and resistance. Okay, so for next week, first of all, the market is obviously still bullish. We have now broken up above and accepted, <clears throat> excuse me, up above that level of resistance from the ascending triangle you can sort of see on the daily time frame, but we identified it on the weekly time frame. So any pullbacks into really 7,750 and lower. Great, great place to look for potential bullish positions. Now what we're also doing is because we have had not a lot of trading in these levels, and you can see we're in July now, all the way back. The market pressed, tried to press up in April, but really we're all the way back into May of 2015 when the market was trading up here. So what we're doing is we're using the clues that the market has left recently. So for potential pullbacks, I'd be happy to look down toward these levels right here. And also these levels right here. So around about 7, 8, 20 up to 7, 8, 45. Basically what the market has done is it has broken up. It has found a tiny little bit of resistance. And we could look at this as breaking up above, pulling back into previous structure, and then finding those potential bullish bounces. Now, what I also want to go over before we start looking at the resistance levels are, or is the potential on this market moving forward. Now, on the weekly time frame, really up into these levels right here. This is the next key levels of resistance. So really here, but it's going all the way up into um, around about 8,300. 8, this is all key resistance. It's basically as the market is collapsing down, we have found the support, and then we've had another very strong move down. You can see it, if we just use the arrows quickly, you can see the market coming down, pressing up ever so slightly, then breaking down, and then coming up to test those levels of resistance. Now moving forward, this is one of the swing levels. If the market, breaks through those levels, then really there's a lot more bullish um, upside potential in this market, you know, potentially all the way up to 8.6 and really 
up toward eight nine. You know, eight nine would be really strong levels of resistance once again. So that is a longer term view. It all comes down to how the market reacts when it reaches these levels right here. Okay, so back on the daily time frame, let's have a look at these resistance levels. What I'll do also is I will take you through that, where we've seen that rejection last week, exactly how I identified it. Okay, so let's just have a look up here. Whoops, sorry, let me just go back onto the daily time frame there. It's a little bit annoying with Pro Real Time. If you plot something on one time frame and then you try and change it on a different time frame, it will kick you back to the time frame where you set the um, support and resistance lines or whatever it may be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these right here. Okay, so the market. You can see that swing level that we just went over on the weekly time frame right here. And then you can see the market breaking down. And then we've pressed back up and you can see the market testing, 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 and testing. Now, when the market rejected coming into last week, it was right here, right about 7,990. Now everyone's watching at 7,800, and sorry, not 7,800, 8,000. 8,000 is a round number, it's a big round number you very often find that markets will react to those psychological levels. Now, if we move this ever so slightly down, what we can see is that the market tests these levels and then it breaks down. And then as we start to break down, we are, or the bulls are stepping back in and forcing the market up. They're trying to basically retest this level. And what you can see is the market being forced up and the first time it tries, the rejection comes at 7,975. And then we break down. Now what's confirming this as a key level is that as the market then breaks back up once again, and this is the market once again testing the levels, but also trying to hold up above these levels and turn the market um, bullish once again. You know, the markets are always in flux. The bulls and the bears are always battling. It's never just completely synchronized or there would be no movement in the market. Now the confirmation that this was a strong level is that when we have this huge strong move up here on the 28th of April, this candle right here, you can see it spikes up. However, it's the spike down that I'm interested in. The spike down is almost exactly at the same level as this spike up right here, which was the first attempt to retest previous structure. And then if you move forward here, you can see the market once again after this trying to break up above and it fails and then closes back down below that level. The next day the market opens and instantly rejects. So it's giving you all of those clues that this is a strong level of support and resistance. Now, if we're moving up, we're thinking, okay, we have the level 8,000, obviously. Now, I like to kind of have my support and resistance levels relatively accurate. So you could argue that this whole section here is resistance, which is absolutely fine, depending on how you're trading. You know, it's a what, 95 point zone. And really, you could come all the way up to here. You could come all the way up to the top of this. Um, and if you're trading on daily time frame, four hour time frame, you know, fair enough, that's absolutely fine. But if you're trading on lower time frames, you want to be a little bit more accurate. So you're thinking, okay, we want to incorporate the 8,000 level, obviously. However, where is the market giving me the clues that I should have this, um, this level? And really, it's here. It's just down below 8,000, that's 7995. In fact, I can tell you where it is. Let's have a look. 7997 and... Here, 7996.5. So around about 7997. Just put it exactly at 7997. Now, the way I'm determining that is because a few things. So this candle here that I was using as the basis for this level of support and resistance, the market comes down and tests, then it pops back up, and then it closes up above this level. It's basically the market... Um, the bulls stepping in once again. They're looking at this as a key level. They're trying to close it up above it, looking at that as a bullish sign. So then the next day, 
Hopefully, the bulls will step back in again. And if the market is turning bullish, it will rally up. But instead, it fails. Then if we move forward, once again, we break up. Much stronger break this time through this level. Again, the bulls trying to take control. However, we then come down. We test at this level here. Um, and once again, this is where the bulls are looking to step in. However, we then fail. But what it's doing for us is giving us the clues that this is a key level um, to watch for that potential support and resistance. Now, moving forward into next week, it remains a key level of support and resistance. If we break up above also, there's the potential there to look for the bullish bounces. However, really, um, if we are starting to break up above, there's so much not major resistance, but there's so many levels of resistance up here that it is worthwhile looking for some sort of profit taking. 8.055 to around about 8.020. And then we're up toward, really it's, um, I just want to make sure I get this as a key level here. Let me have a look. here all the way up to here so we're about 8.080 to 8.110 um, you can see the market here giving the flat levels of price action and um, you know it's key key levels once again now I'm not the market may break up even stronger than that and come through very very strongly but for next week those are the main areas I am looking at key level of resistance here up above and up above. Now what we're looking for is now that the market is up at these levels, how it reacts. First of all, if we start to see the rejection coming in, forcing the market down, as I've mentioned, potential buy positions, potential buy positions, and definitely down here, potential buy positions. Um, up here, really the medium term view is how does the market react? Does it, or do we get continual rejections? If we do, more than happy to keep selling. If we start to break through these key levels, and as I've mentioned, there's the potential there for a much stronger move up on the Australian dollar. Okay guys, so that is everything for this week. A little bit of a longer video um, this time. There was quite a few things I wanted to go over. So as always, I hope that was helpful. Hope you all have a great trading week next week. I'm James Orr and thank you.